To create an advertiser, we'll click on the Advertisers tab and select New Advertiser from the drop-down menu. In DFA, fields marked with an asterisk, such as the advertiser name, are required. The advertiser will usually be the name of our client, but in some circumstances might represent a branch of the business. Once the name is entered, we'll click Save. Now that we've created our advertiser, we'll be able to use it for future campaigns. Next, we'll create a new campaign. First, we'll select the advertiser that this campaign is promoting. Under campaign name, we'll type in the name of this particular campaign. In the schedule section, we'll enter the start and end date of the campaign by clicking the calendar icon. Keep in mind, these dates don't represent the campaign duration, but instead simply auto-populate the placement start and end dates in the media plan we enter later on. Landing pages are the pages on the advertiser's website that users visit after they click on a banner. We're required to enter a URL so that DFA has at least one destination for users who clicked, but we can enter up to 100 landing pages in the event that there are different pages for different banners. The first landing page we create should be the most generic one possible, as this is the landing page that will be listed as the click-through URL for each creative, unless we change it later on. There are other fields available in the Campaign Properties section, but it's not necessary to complete them to get our campaign up and running. Now, we'll click Save. After saving the campaign properties, we're brought back to the campaign level tabs for our newly created campaign. There's a message from DFA letting us know that the campaign has been successfully created and saved, and that a unique ID has been assigned.